You're right. This is important. It's the most important thing you'll ever learn. You see, it says in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Oh, um, what, what does that mean? And who is John? I thought we were talking about Jesus. Sorry, yes, you're right. John was one of Jesus' followers, one of his friends, and he wrote down things that Jesus did and said during this time so that we can learn more about Jesus today by reading what he wrote. And this scripture is a really, really big deal. You know how I keep talking about how Jesus loved and served? Well, this was the most ultimate way that he did that ever. I mean, the feeding the hungry and healing the sick and raising the dead was really cool. But this love beat all of that. Wow, but what does that scripture mean? What, what did he do for us? Well, it says that God loved the world. Because he loved the world, he sent Jesus to the earth. So Jesus came and started loving and serving others. But God also knew that we needed something or someone to save us and fill in that gap that sin caused. Remember, I told you the Bible says that sin deserves punishment. Well, God loves us so much that he didn't want us to live forever without him. But in order to live with him, there had to be consequences for our punishment. I'm not talking about 10 minutes and time out. Remember, I'm talking about forever without God. That is a serious punishment, one that God loved us so much that he didn't want us to have to serve, even though we deserved it. The perfect payment for this punishment, the only thing that could fill the gap and erase the sin forever, was a perfect sacrifice. The problem is, no one is perfect, but Jesus was. He was fully God and fully human. When he came, he was tempted, just like as we are as humans. But he chose to never sin or never do anything wrong. He was perfect in every way all 33 years of his life on earth. 33 years? Old? That's not a very long life. What happened? Well, that's what I'm getting to. Okay, back to that love. God loved us so much that he sent Jesus to be the sacrifice. In order for something to be a sacrifice, it has to give up itself to save someone else. So God sent Jesus to die so that we can live. He was the sacrifice. He purposely died. He knew when he came to earth that he would end his life in a gruesome death. Also that our punishment would be paid and we could live forever with God. Now that's quite the showing of love and serving. Oh my gosh, but we deserve that death, not him. That's not fair. I can't believe he did that, but how, how did he die? Well, it wasn't pretty. In fact, it was pretty gruesome. You see, First, Jesus was arrested. Even though he was perfect, he had done nothing wrong. Then he was beaten badly. He was hit multiple times with a stick that had sharp edges on the end of it. He was mocked and abused. And then, as if that's not bad enough, nails were driven through his wrist and his feet to a wooden cross that was then stuck into the ground for everyone to see him. He was humiliated and went through extreme pain thirsty and suffocating on the cross and still loved us. He even loved the people who did this to him. Oh, what? I don't even know what to say. So because he died for us, this means that we can live with God forever. Yes, but we have to believe this story. We have to trust that the Bible is true and God's love is true. Then because we understand what God's love did for us, we can choose to follow Jesus and show others that love by serving like Jesus did. Huh, yeah, that, that is hard to live like him, especially since he was perfect. But I can definitely see why it's important to try now, because the more we try to live like him, the more people will know about him and see him, right? Exactly, you're really starting to get the idea of this good news, King. Yeah, but... I don't really see how it's good news if, if Jesus is dead forever. That's the best news of all. You see, we couldn't have lived forever with God if Jesus remained dead because the punishment of death had to be conquered. Jesus conquered that punishment. He conquered sin. He conquered death, even death on a cross. What? 
How did he do this? After Jesus' body was taken down from the cross and placed in a tomb, that was the way people were buried back then. But Jesus didn't stay dead. Because you know what happened? Three days later, the Bible says that he rose from the dead. Because he was perfect, death couldn't hold him down. Because he was the ultimate sacrifice and he loved us enough to die for us. He was perfect. He rose from the dead and now he sits at the right hand of God, his father, and we get the chance to live forever with him. Wow, and he did this for everyone? Yes, everyone. Even people who are murderers or thieves, everyone has a chance to live with him. But remember, they have to believe this story and then choose to love and serve others because of this story. Wow, this, this truly is a great story. By far the greatest story that I've ever heard. We should celebrate this. We do celebrate this. That is why we are here today. It's Easter, and Easter is the celebration of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. What? Easter? I thought Easter was about peace and a strange bunny that comes into your house in the middle of the night. No, some people receive gifts at Easter to represent the ultimate gift that Jesus was. But Easter is not about a bunny. It's about Jesus, the greatest king ever known. He is the reason we celebrate. He is the reason we come to church every Sunday, not only on Easter. He is the reason that we worship and have joy and love. I know, I know. He's the reason that we love. We should always love others because he first loved us. The greatest thing that we can do is love. Yes, you knew exactly what I was going to say. He is the reason that we love. And by loving and serving others, we are showing others the great news of Jesus Christ. So I know that I taught you a lot today, but if you take any of it, I hope that you remember that God loves you. He loves you so much, he sent his son to die for you. His son loves you so much, he chose to die for you. And because we want to be like him, we should love others no matter the cost. Wow, this is great. You're right, Matt. This love is way bigger than my love for pizza or even my queen. This is definitely the greatest love ever known.